makes it okay. more official. All right, we're we, good. We ready? So, so we we um, are in session. Um, we opened the the meeting of uh, the Cohasset Select Board um, earlier this evening and went into executive session. So we've done our roll call. I'm just going to read some of the um, the the. Uh, the setting of the stage. Tonight's meeting will be conducted on the Zoom platform and live streamed on Cohasset 143 TV and on Cohasset's Facebook page. The public is also invited to participate on the Zoom platform, which can be accessed using the link provided at the top of the posted agenda for tonight's meeting. Please note that comments on the Facebook platform are not monitored. Members of the board or other scheduled participants will be asked to participate when called on by the chair. Board members will be able to ask questions of any participant. All votes taken at the meeting will be by roll call. Members of the public who wish to ask questions during public comment or um, at the discretion of the chair are asked to utilize the question and answer feature on Zoom, including typing in their name and address for the public record. The chair and vice chair will review the questions and direct them to the appropriate participant for a response. This meeting is also being recorded and will be available for later viewing on Cohasset 143 TV. And I invite anybody um, who would like to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, and Jack has the flag right over his shoulders. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United States, United States of, America, of America and to the Republic, the Republic for which it stands, which it stands a nation, a nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty and liberty, justice for all. Justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you. The first, um, the first order of business is um, any public comment for items not on the agenda. I know that um, we have uh, somebody reached out to me ahead of time. Um, if Peter's Peter Pescatori is in the gallery, could we promote him? Can anybody see? He's coming up. He should be there in a second. Great. Diane, while we're waiting for that, we have one question from Sean Galvin of 143 Fort Hill Street in Hingham asking if Cohasset will go forward with trick-or-treating on Halloween. Oh, that's something that we can uh, dis uh, dis put on it a, a separate agenda since that's nothing we can um, answer tonight, but that is an interesting question that we probably should discuss in, uh, at our first meeting in October. Um, Great. And Peter, you're next up on our public comment. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Good evening to all. Um, thanks for uh, giving me a moment to speak. Um, this weekend, uh, we had a great turnout for National Cleanup Day. Uh, it's, it's international as well as national. Uh, we had groups. We had the Rotary. We had the Second Parish Youth Group with the uh, Pastor Karen, we had the brownies, uh, we had families, we had individuals um, working all over town, picking up litter. Um, one group had 13 bags, uh, the Rotary group working along uh, North Main Street uh, did a fantastic job. The youth group working up around the sailing club in the Lightkeeper's light house uh, had four or five bags of trash that they picked up, plus an old chair and all kinds of stuff. So uh, it was a great success. All volunteers, um, all taking their own initiative to go out and, and clean up. The Brownies uh, cleaned up uh, Wilwright Park, made it spotless. I arrived with my dogs to, with my bag, gloves, and dogs to walk through Wilwright and clean it up, and it was spotless. So uh, they beat me to it. Uh, <laughs> The other thing I, I want to, and Chris was probably going to announce this um, uh, as well, but uh, we got, uh, yesterday I got a notice from uh, the planning director that the state has finally approved, uh, we have final approval for the open space and recreation plan, which runs from 2018 to 2025. So uh, we're delighted after a very long, uh, gestation period to finally have final approval of the uh, open space plan. And uh, with that, I thank you for giving me time and I hope you have a good night. Great, congratulations. Thanks for sharing that good Excellent news. Excellent job. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Lady, any 
nothing, nobody else in the peanut gallery for tonight. Thank you. Um, so we'll move on to the community update. Um, and um, there's been lots going on as there always is. Who's going first, Chief? Um, good, uh, good evening, Madam Chairperson and good, uh, good evening, members of the board. Um, yeah, very quickly, we'll, we're going to do a quick update on what's going on. Um, and I'm going to do my quick PSA before we do. Um, and my PSA is very, very simple. And it is that the fall weather has officially arrived, as we've all noticed, and we're slowly but surely all moving back indoors. Um, as we move back indoors and we become closer and more in contact with each other, I just want to do the quick reminder that there are four things that we can all do that will help with the, the virus as, it, as we progress through the fall and the winter. And the first is obviously wear your face covering slash mask, number one. Number two, wash your hands. Do those things. Uh, number three, try and keep socially distanced from people. Six feet is the number that they keep throwing out at us. As the governor likes to say, his problem right now is people that are familiar with each other being too familiar with each other. So remember the six foot distance. And then lastly, if and you don't feel well for any reason, please stay home. And if you have the symptoms of coronavirus, go and get tested. And the, the isolation and the quarantine protocols are all over the place. I think we've seen them. They're on our website. They're on the state website. They're on, they're on uh, every, every website you can find. So the bottom line is those are the things that we can do. And with that, that's the end of my PSA. I'll get off my soapbox for a minute. I actually, I actually do have a, 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 an order. So I, I believe Miriam is up next to tell us, talk to us about the town hall reopening. There you go. Good evening. Um, thank you. Uh, we have officially opened Town Hall as of yesterday. Uh, we have put together a protocol that uh, we believe keeps both staff and visitors safe. We uh, have set it up so that all visitors come into Town Hall in the front of the building uh, we are highly recommending appointments for business so that there's minimum waiting, but the town hall is not set up so that people can line up at departments and be socially distant. So we have narrow hall hallways in some cases. So people who do not have appointments can be seen, but they may have to wait until someone is available or we'll help them actually book an appointment. Um, we put together a, a video of that, which is on our website. I don't know, and I know um, it's already been distributed to many people. And so it's a very quick video that shows basically the process of coming into town hall and how you'll be greeted and what you'll be asked to do. Um, everyone coming into town hall must wear a face mask. And if for some reason you're unable or uh, medically uh, unable to wear a face mask, we will service you uh, in a different way, um, virtually in some, in some sort. So we'll work with people to do that. Uh, we've gone out to staff and we've asked them how it's going. We've tweaked the process a little bit where we had things that didn't feel right or didn't move as smoothly as possible. And uh, everybody seems to be okay with the process. Of course, with the election coming, we have you know um, lots of people who are coming for ballots and, and information and we're working on a way to provide that without having everybody come in and ask a question in, per in person. So we're open. Um, it's going well, and I guess that that's about it. Did you want me to show the video to the public at this point? If it's easy and to tee it up. Oh, if, oh, let's, let's give it a try. Do you want me to try? How long is it? <laughs> it's like a minute. Okay. It's like a minute. Can you do it, Chris? We are getting so savvy. Mm -hmm. Hi, 
Hi, Jen. The sound uh, track is uh, was not really great then, but if you go to the website, the soundtrack is much better. So, Diane, you're still muted. I think I just breathe on it and it, I'm gonna sit on my hands. Um, just a question that I know somebody typed in, but I was gonna ask it anyway, which is I have had a lot of people ask about the library um, my answer has been it's a, it's a place where people gather and spend time and that's that is exactly what we're trying to avoid um, and that all their other functions are are, are are ongoing but if you could kind of confirm that that my, that's my understanding I, I can confirm that so we have virtual programming going on we have curbside delivery we have Wi-Fi in the parking lot but we are not open to the public as of yet, and there is not a date set for that yet. Thank you. You're welcome. Carrie? Yeah, there is really good Wi-Fi in the library parking lot too, if anyone needs to go sit and do something in their car, it does work really well. You never know when you're gonna need to escape. <laughs> but also, Miriam, quick question for you. In terms of people calling to make appointments, do you prefer that to just be calling the main town hall number or is there an easier electronic way to make appointments or what would you prefer? The easiest and uh, most preferred way is on our website, you can actually click a link and fill out a form for an appointment and then we'll confirm that with you. However, for people who are not... Um, internet savvy, they can always call the department that they wish to see and make an appointment. Thank you. Unless, Paul? Do, do the employees have the option of wearing a full face shield, um, like a plastic uh, shield? Because we're using that in the hospital starting about maybe uh, eight weeks ago for um, protection of the eyes. We have not uh, had anyone ask for one, nor have we required them to do that. Okay, it's just if they're gonna be inside for a, a good length of time uh, serving the public, uh, one thing you might consider. Okay, we can certainly do that. Uh, we do have them available if, uh, if any of the members of the staff want them. Great, thank you. I'm gonna keep us moving. Um, next up is um, Chief Quigley, who's gonna update us on a few things. Hey folks, how you doing? Um, good evening, and um, today was the first day of school. This oh, wow. year. So this, they've uh, divided you know, the classes, they've divided the school population into two groups. So the first group went today, the next group will go on Thursday. So we'll have day one all over again on Thursday. So, um, effort to streamline that we've we've cleared the construction off of Sawyer Street for the week. They're not going to be working up there. We just you know we're trying to ensure uh, the smooth smooth uh, flow of traffic, and it, it worked out okay today. 
um, water volume. It's just, you know, we're, we're trying to put a lot of people into a small place. So it's a volume um, issue as opposed to, you know, it's not really the flow. We're doing the best we can with what we have. Um, the, you know, buses, no, no issues with the buses and uh, everything, you know, from, from our view, everything went pretty smoothly. Um, you know, and it was, you know, uh, it, as quick as we expected. Um, that's really all I have, uh, you know, uh, with, with the schools and everything else I think has been covered. So in effort to not take up too much time, I'll, I'll throw it back to you. Great, thank you. Um, next on my list is Pam. <laughs> there we go. There you go. Um, Chris, did you get a, a slide too about the flu clinic for me? While he looks for that, I, um, somebody brought up Halloween. I just want to tell you guys also that um, the Department of Public Health from the state that comes up with all the guidance for all the different business sectors like retail, restaurants, recreation, they're also going to come up with guidance for Halloween. There's been a lot of um, call for that, as you can imagine, from all the different towns around the state. So we're expecting next week to get something about what is and is not allowed for Halloween. We do know already that they're not gonna allow haunted houses like you know that Barrett's haunted house or the haunted ship in Quincy. Unfortunately, see you in 2021 <laughs> for that stuff, but um, hopefully they'll have trick or treating, we'll see. And maybe just some modifications or something. Great, thank you. But I did wanna talk about the flu clinic. If you could just go to the next slide, please, Chris. So we are gonna have um, a town, town flu clinics, plural. Mary Goodwin is the public health nurse and she will be running these. Um, the first two are actually drive-through clinics on October 21st and the 28th. Those are Wednesdays from 10 in the morning till noon. They're both gonna be held at the Osgood School. And then there will be one in-person clinic on November 14th from 10 in the morning till one in the afternoon. And that's gonna be at the Dare Hill School. So um, a few things to remember for each of these clinics, you do need to wear a mask. Even if you're in your car, you still need to wear a mask. And if you come in your car, you can have more than one family member. You could have somebody in each seat, but you just have to you know, call ahead. Um, so there is also a limited supply of the high dose vaccine, which is what um, is given to people 65 and older. So make sure that you do sign up as soon as you can. All these vaccines will be covered by insurance. So it's just important to um, schedule your appointment. You can either email Mary Goodwin at mgoodwin at cohasetma.org, or you can call Mary at the town hall number. Her extension is 5130. And that's it. Great, thank you. I, I actually have a question for you, Dr. Schubert, and then I'll let you um, ask your question. And my question is just in terms of timing for flu shots, I mean, is there, you know, is it better to get it today instead of October 28th or? Yeah, get it as soon as possible. It will cover you for the entire season. And remember that as flu season wanes, uh, it's basically gonna be six months. It's gonna be from November until May at the latest. Uh, we saw an early drop in flu numbers uh, once we did the lockdown in March and April um, across the country, we saw numbers drop dramatically. I suspect that's a combination of social distancing, masking, and <clears throat> prevention of spread through schools. Um, so now is now is the time to get it. Yes. This is, and then did you have a question? Yeah. Yeah. Um, th this is extremely important um, for, for two reasons. Um, the flu itself is, is a deadly disease. It, it's going to kill 30 to 80,000 per year, depending on how bad the flu season is. Um, we may get a light flu season this year if everyone is careful, cautious, masking, and getting their flu vaccines. The other most important thing is the combination of flu infection with a, a COVID uh, coronavirus infection has an extremely high baseline mortality. We saw this in the Italian studies, Germany and Spain. So that will also lower the overall mortality of a, a coronavirus infection. The other thing which it will do, it will lower the overall demand on the hospitals with numbers of flu infections and hospitalizations. Uh, we will start to see the second wave and we're seeing it a little bit now. We've we're behind Europe by probably four weeks. So 
Europe is beginning to see it now. We're going to see it. The question is how big, how high, and what the demand on the, the hospital, EMTs, police, fire are going to be. So th this is a key thing um, it, running into the fall to get. That's all. And if you get shut out of Cohasset, our, our clinics is also CVS, Walgreens, Stop and Shop. I think originally they were all supposed to be walk-in, but I think uh, people have been doing it so much. There is such a high demand that you should call ahead and just make sure you can get an appointment. Great. Thank you. Chief, did you want to say something, Chief Sylvia? No, no. PM covered okay. it. Thank you. All righty. Any, anybody else? Okay. Great. Thank you all again. <laughs> for all you're doing and in, uh, in, in giving us um, updates as best we can and as we all navigate these crazy um, unknown waters. Glenn, are things slowing down for you a bit? Now that we got schools open, uh, I think this week will be a little less of a hectic pace, but um, uh, we spent a lot of time coordinating with them last week. We delivered just a little over 14,000 individual uh, pieces of personal protective equipment to the schools. And uh, now we'll see what the burn rate is if they have it. Yeah. Uh, we, we found a new home temporarily for the buses at the Little League Field, so that was a big plus. And uh, so yeah, we think everything is going well. Great, fingers crossed. Good, thank you. Any other questions from Select Board? We're good? All right, thank you. We're gonna move on to um, committee and board appointments. Um, the first two, um, I, I don't believe they're in our waiting room because their um, uh, their committee recommended um, appointments for two different master plan implementation committees. So um, the first is Peter Hobson, who um, has been um, he's a, uh, this is for the master plan implementation committee seat on the affordable housing steering committee. Um, if anybody has any questions, otherwise I'll take a motion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, roll call. Jack Creighton, aye. Corey Evans, aye. Diane Kennedy, aye. Paul Schubert, aye. Carrie Thompson, aye. Great, Peter's officially um, on the Affordable Housing Steering Committee as the Master Plan Implementation Committee representative. And then um, similarly, we have um, the Cohasset Historical Commission has recommended Julia Gleason to a position on the Master Plan Implementation Committee. Is there a motion? I move so that moved. we appoint. Go ahead. <laughs> I move that we appoint Julia Gleason to the MPIC Cohasset Historical Commission. How about a second, Jack? Second, because Julia, one of her older relatives I used to work with him in Boston who was general counsel to the mayor many years ago so we we worked with him so I'm glad to second it glad on, to be on board that's terrific okay roll call please Jack Creighton I Corey Evans I Diane Kennedy I Paul Schubert I Harry Thompson I great okay thank you welcome to Julia um, and then last evening we um, interviewed three um, three terrific candidates for the two positions on the Conservation Commission as associate members. These are one-year appointments. Um, Chair of the Conservation Commission, Jay Pimpari, was with us as well to kind of um, talk about the needs for CONCOM and, and, and the role of, um, of not only the commission, but also these two associate members for one year. So, um, you know, I, I think we have, we're very fortunate that <laughs> we have great candidates. Um, there's, there are other positions left in town. I'm just gonna tee this conversation up. Um, there's a, a position on the design review board, which is a Troika appointment um, that will be upcoming. And we also have um, nine seats on the school facilities committee, which is a very important um, uh, role that we need to, or a committee that we need to get moving on. So, um, you know, whoever isn't chosen, we're going to um, talk to them, um, hopefully, about getting them engaged in another way. So, um, I'll open it up for anybody from the board that has um, some thoughts on our interviews from last night. Uh, Corey? Yeah, I'll start off. I mean, you know, I, I took a really hard look at, at you know, ComCom Com, Com and, and these three applicants. And, you know, we kind of have boards that are review boards and we have boards that are 
I don't want to be pejorative here, but like our doing boards, boards that, you know, make processes happen versus boards that need to take an input and then make, make a decision. Um, right. Understanding that, you know, what I think, uh, my personal view is I would recommend um, appointing uh, Heather Seitz and Tom Bell. And then uh, for Mr. William Ashton, I'd love to get him on a board that's more of a doing board. Um, his background is very much in construction, managing projects, and that his skills are going to be very, very useful uh, if he's willing, of course, uh, you know, to be involved in some of the projects that we need that kind of the, the vision of how do you structure, how do you organize, how do you get people together, how do you move stuff forward. Um, so that's just my first first pass on this. Yeah, that's, that's good. I, I, I mean, I think um, um, Will and Heather both in particular had had um, professional roles where they were in front of hearing boards, which, which is good. But I, again, I mean, they're, they're all terrific. And, and as you well know, Corey, I believe there's still positions on, um, on cable advisory, right? Yeah. So, so a doing board, a, a, a very, uh, very much doing board. Um, anybody else? Jack. Yeah. Um, you know, as a former chair of conservation and long serving member, you know, I looked at very, very carefully. It's all of them are more than qualified. We should be grateful and we should be grateful they've stepped forward. However, I do think that uh, Tom Bell and Heather Sykes are probably more suited for what is after all a, um, the conservation commission is a regulatory body. It's a little bit, you know, different. And uh, from our questions last night, it appeared to me that they both understand that. And I think that Will did so as well. But I'm looking at Will and I'm seeing there's other places that I'd like to see him plugged into. So I think uh, I would say that uh, Heather Sykes and Tom Bell would certainly get my vote. Okay. Anybody else? Paul? Um, yeah, I, I tend to agree. I mean, it's one of the few times where there are three extremely qualified candidates for two positions. Um, half the time in town, we're usually shy a, a position to fill because there's no one even willing to put their name out there. Um, these are three tremendously qualified candidates. Um, I, I would agree. I think uh, Heather Seitz and, and Tom Beller are, are um, probably better. Um, I think mainly because I think if if Will Ashton is willing to serve on another board somewhere, um, that would be great if we can hook them and land them for another board that is um, that he's willing to serve on would be great. I think um, he's listening. Yeah. I, I don't clue don't um, clue him in. <laughs> I mean, I, I hope so because you know, with, with qualified candidates that are, you know, stepping up, the concom is a very um, demanding position to begin with time-wise and it's very thoughtful and has a lot of impact on, on buildings, on uh, homeowners and things like that. So um, we need very good people and there's three of them, but you know, I, I'm going to go with Heather Seitz and Tom Bell if, if Will Ashton is willing to do another uh, position somewhere. I, I think the other exciting thing to say uh, is that, you know, we're, we have now formed all of these um, master plan working groups. I mean, there's so many opportunities. Those are going to end up spreading out and cross pollinating with different committees. And um, I think that kind of the, the net is going to get wider in terms of um, wanting to bring in more people from the community. So um, this is all good news. Carrie. I agree with what everyone said, and I really hate this type of decision because all three of them are qualified. And Will Ashton, this is almost a compliment to you, even though it doesn't seem like it. You do also seem really qualified with your particular skill set for some other committees. And I know that's not the main reason why we should make a decision, but I actually think there's some other really good spots for Will right now that we need his voice on in some other areas of town. So I'm hoping that you take that as a compliment, Will, because you're absolutely qualified for ComCom. I just agree in terms of fit. The other two are probably a little bit better of fit right this minute. Great. Uh, would somebody like to make a motion? I'll take that. Uh, I make a motion to appoint Heather Seitz and Tom Bell to the Conservation Commitment <laughs> Conservation Commission. It is a commitment. <laughs> <laughs> Slip there. Um, for what's the term? Com Commission for one year, um, yeah. Conservation one Commission year for one year appointments. Uh, associate. 
associate members for one year appointments. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Second. Okay. Roll call vote beginning with Jack. Jack Creighton, aye. Corey Evans, aye. Diane Kennedy, aye. Paul Short, aye. Carrie Thompson, aye. Great. Thank you. Thank you all very much. I know it is hard to, to um, you know, pick, um, but we have to. <laughs> and uh, we will be reaching out to uh, both of them with their, uh, uh, Tom and Heather with appointment letters and kind of the next steps to get them onboarded. And also um, we'll be reaching out to Will with some other options um, in the next couple of days. So thank you. Um, the next, next on the agenda is uh, a film permit. Who, so Chris, do I you have details on that? Do you have the application? Hang no. on. The application's on the OneDrive. Okay. Okay. Um, can you pull it up? Yeah, yeah I could show, I, I can, let me, you want me to show it on the screen? If you could, I, I, I and by the way, the applicant has just appeared on the screen too, Mr. Uh, is it Canassus or Nassus? Canassus. Nassus. All right. So let me let me show it so you have it. Okay. So what I'm going to ask um, Mr. Knassis to to do, if, if he could unmute himself, is just kind of give us the the high points of this, the the date, the hours of filming, which we we just saw, but just kind of walk us through what you're doing and how many people, um, so that we can uh, consider some questions for you. Sure, sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your time. I appreciate it uh, very much. Uh, this is a, a totally uh, independent thing. It's a passion project of mine. Um, it is something that I, I tried to raise funding for uh, for a while, but couldn't do it. So I just kind of decided to do it myself. Um, the main thing being um, the, the iPhone, the new iPhone. The video is stellar, it's 4K. Um, so we're shooting it on the iPhone. Um, it would be uh, the iPhone, a tripod, two lights, two small lights. Um, four actors um and uh an assistant um and i believe uh, one of the actor's parents uh would be there too because he's uh he's 15. um and it's a, a dialogue scene where this kid asks um uh the main character Allie, uh to the dance uh she's sitting on the stone slab in front of the the library um and he gets um humiliated by two bullies um don't give it away and if, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Can we drive um, by and honk? And <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. If if you want, um, but uh, it's it's pretty simple, you know. Like I I originally wrote it for an interior, uh, you know, before COVID, and it's just been like, it's been like amazing, like rewriting certain scenes, um, you know, putting everything outside. Ninety five percent of the story takes place outside now, um, and it's made a lot of the film better, uh, tighter storytelling, more original locations. Um, but I really wanted to find a school that, you know, had a, had a, looked like it had a history, a lived in look, a charming New England um, feel to it. Um, I didn't want like a brand new school, you know, that, that looked like any school. Um, and I drove by Paul Pratt. I've always driven by Paul Pratt Library um, when I'm in Cohasset. And I just thought, well, that could double for a school or at least a section of a school and it was um, at one time a school it, it used to be oh school. really yep when when was this what year when what period was this um, the original well, osgood school yeah yeah so, oh the osgood school yeah okay all right because really the other one's in the uh kind of in the back right beside uh another school yeah i can't remember when it closed like maybe in the 80s or early 90s um, but anyway, uh, um, one, one of the things, um, I didn't ask you for your name and address, if you could just, uh, just give us that before you close your comments, um, for the record and, um, and then just remind us of the day and times. Me? Yes, you, sorry. Sorry, I'm Anthony Canassis. Uh, my address is 9 Richard Road in Hingham. Okay, great. And, uh, I'm requesting, uh, September 27th. 
Sunday from 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Uh, we'd be out of there by 12.45. Do, do you see any, um, it looks like you, you have five to six people, do you see uh, any disruption to the street? Are you gonna be in the road at all? I know sometimes we've had issues with film crews occupying some streets, so just speak to that, please. No, no, we, um, we were actually planning on, on just parking our cars uh, at the, uh, the, the lot behind the school next to the playground. Mm -hmm. If that's okay. cool. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, Carrie? Yeah, first of all, it seems like a really cool idea. I'm excited to watch the movie eventually, but especially because the library isn't open yet, I feel like there won't, there will be minimal disruption. So I'm totally fine with this happening. Thank you. Chris? Oh, I just let everybody know, uh, Bronwyn Nelson, the acting library director, did clear this to the Board of Trustees of the library, and they, they seem to be fine with it so long as they follow safety protocols and whatever the, you know, the board requires. Great. Thank you for noting that. Paul or Jack, any questions? No, I'm good. Yeah, Paul? Um, yeah, this will give new life to the uh, old Osgood School. Um, I think it's a great idea. I, I'm uh, willing to uh, make a motion to approve the application for <clears throat> film the anger 927 2020 uh 8 30 a.m to closing at uh, 1 p.m second okay uh our roll call vote jack Rayton, aye. Corey evans aye diane kennedy aye paul Schubert, aye. harry thompson aye that was easy great thank you and good luck thank you so much i i from the bottom of my heart i appreciate it so much You're welcome thank you we look forward to hearing more about it Absolutely. Okay. So as a part of our monthly financial update, um, Chris, I'm going to turn it over to you and Paula. Okay. So we have, Paula will be jumping up as she's jumping up, uh, the quarterly update on investments. This will be through June 30th. Um, and, um, and I'll turn it over to Paula. Hi, Paula. Hi. Thank you. Hi, Paula. Thank you. Yep. Um, so like Chris said, this is for the quarter ending June 30th. Um, and so the vast majority of the returns, they're, they're all positive for the quarter. They're one year, three years, five years. Um, and um, the, the year to date are the only ones we really have any negatives and most of them are negative, although one did manage uh, a positive return. Um, but over the long term, we're pretty close to our respective benchmarks, which is always a good thing. Um, so for expendable trusts, we're up like between three and almost 5% for the quarter and mixed for the calendar year. One of our accounts lost 2% and the other one gained a little bit over 3%. Um, we're up one to 8% for the year. Uh, we're up two to 5% for three years and up three to 5% for five years. Um, the permanent trusts, they're up 6.2% for the quarter and down 1.7 for the calendar year to date, up 4.3 for the year and up 5.4 for three years, up 6.5 for five years, and 6.2 since inception, which was back in 2014. The OPEB, they're up seven to 15.7% for the quarter and down 2.1 to 3.6 for calendar year to date, up 1.9 to 2.6 for the year, up 4.8 to 5.6 for three years, and up 5. 5% to 6.2% for five years and 4.4 to 6.1 for since inception. Um, if you'll recall, we, um, we passed that prudent investor and we've gone ahead and changed the, the policy to include that. Uh, this was the first time, this is the first quarter that we actually had any returns and uh, made any changes for that. And what we did do, this is strictly in the permanent trust section now, um, but we, some of the common stock was sold off. We didn't like uh, divest of any one particular stock. We just took a little bit from a, a bunch of different ones. And uh, we added more diversif diversifying funds, international equity and international fixed income for now to kind of help round out the, the portfolio. Um, as it turns out, the legal list um, stocks tend to do pretty well in a down market. So there was no like immediate need to, to get rid of all those at this point. So, so that's where we are. Um, 
Any questions on on that? No, it's just it's it's just very interesting how investments work somewhat differently than the economy, <laughs> the the you know Main Street economy, if you will. <laughs> well, yeah, everything was down in March, but now we're right. we've, we've come back up and right. yeah, so. We'll see how positively. it goes for the rest of the year, right? Absolutely. And so with, with respect to the permanent trusts and the legal list reallocations that you did, there's, there's, it's kind of spread out such that we're not really tracking whatever, what difference that made. And you made conscious decisions, and this is like a correct me if I'm wrong kind of statement. You made choices not to move into a more diversified portfolio in some cases because the legal list stocks in particular were going to be um were likely to be more positive does that make sense well we we made moves, we made moves to be to be more diversified for sure there was no international stuff because right. that's not on the legal list right um and there's things like uh, for the fixed income you can do you know government assets but you can't really do credit so much and so we did a little bit of that as well so there's a little bit more um diversity um but you know the the legalist stocks themselves they have different things in like healthcare, for example so we've got a couple of healthcare, like pfizer's one of them and they've got you know so we didn't necessarily get rid of all those yeah we, we maybe reduced our position in those to give us that diversification but this isn't really necessarily a great time to go selling a whole bunch of you know stock that is you know kind of blue chip kind of going to do do well. around forever kind of stock okay right yep and okay. dividend some of them are dividend paying as well too so okay that makes sense but we may do more of that over time terrific makes sense any questions okay yep corey i was just you know i'm new <laughs> but so you know just uh, uh a 30,000 foot view of, uh, you know, how we're doing, what our goals are with this fund, you know, kind of where we're headed here. Well, it depends on the, the different funds, the expendable trusts, they're in more of fixed income and less in the, in the stocks. Um, because during any of the town meetings, everyone, the town can vote to, to spend some of that money, generally not all of it all at once, but we still need to be prepared to, to um you know meet capital needs or you know for the enterprise funds or for the town itself um with the permanent trust those tend to be more like scholarships and cemetery funds and those generally the principal amount is restricted you can't spend that money so that can be a little bit more in, in the equities because you only get to spend the interest so it's a, a small percentage of what you have um, and then the OPEB obviously is much longer term and that actually we can use the prudent investor standard as well. So that also would be um, into stocks, equities, you know, even um, private equity and stuff like that through PRIT. So that would be even more aggressive. Um, Chris, probably something we should put on a future meeting is to kind of bring Paula back and talk about where we're at with all of our um, financial policies, some of which, you know, we've tweaked recently, some of which we haven't looked at in a while. It just might be a good way of getting us all kind of uh, on the same page about, you know, what, what our strategies have been across the board. And then also in that same discussion, maybe discussing bond council and, and how that relationship works with Paula. Yeah, we can do that. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, okay. yeah we'll set some, um, yeah, we, we try to look at the policies at, 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 the, at least annually. And if there needs to be updates, we bring them back to the board. And that's an important thing. So the policies live, we actually follow them and, and we bring it back to you and the advisory committee um, to get input. Well, and, and yeah, and maybe maybe it's maybe we think about a, a, a joint meeting or uh, with and it could be off cycle in terms of our Tuesday meetings um, with the advisory committee. And that might be an opportunity also to discuss um, budget message. So I'm making notes. You're making notes. Thank you. Okay.
Anything else, Paula or any of the members of the board? All right. Chris, did you want to talk about now or a different time or? Yeah, we're going to bring, uh, now we're going to bring Don and then you can give us that update on where we are in terms of collections. Okay. So we're morphing into FY21. Is that correct? We are. We are, we are in FY21. Here we are. We are in the first Welcome, quarter Don. of FY21. Hello. And, uh, and Don will give us an eye. So you all have the packet that went out. Uh, and Don, let me know if there's anything you want me to show on the screen, and I will. Um, yeah, you want to just bring up, we'll go through uh, the way I usually go. We'll go general fund first, we'll, then we'll go through the enterprise funds. So Chris, if you want to pull up uh, the local receipts report, that would be great. Time is so bizarre, Don. It feels like you were here last week. <laughs> I hope you don't feel that way. <laughs> well, we did just do the FY20 year end a couple right. of weeks. So this is, this is now the regular ago. updates for FY21. So we, remember, we, this is one of the things we'll talk about in a few minutes. We're committing to do regular updates with all of you to, to, so we, to show where we are. Great. Yeah. So ju just a, a quick overall for, for all departments, we're, we're in really good shape. Uh, general fund, we are looking at already within the first two months, we're at 25.7% uh, of the budget collected. Um, which is great. 26% uh, is property tax from our first quarter billing. Um, lo local receipts were slightly down from where we were last year. Uh, two of the bigger items there, uh, motor vehicle excise. And to me, I, it seems like this is uh, more of a timing issue based on when the smaller, so normally the big commitments for each fiscal year occur February or March, or January, somewhere in that in that time frame, but then throughout the calendar year, as new cars are purchased and uh, there are trade-ins and things like that, uh, additional commitments are issued from uh, the RMV. So I don't think it's a big problem. It's just to me, it seems like a timing thing. But I just want to make that note. Uh, Don, when you, when when you say we're off in that um, the local receipts, is that the percentage of the current budget or off the last fiscal? Year we budgeted year. less in that, right? So we did budget less uh, from last year to be conservative, but this is purely just looking at year over year activity. So again, not, not percentage of budget, but just compared to where we were last year at this time. And so that's why to me, it does appear to be more of a timing issue. Okay. And you know, the, the, the smaller commitments that occur throughout the fiscal year after the main commitment in the spring vary from from commitment to commitment depending on activity so um, it could be time it could be less purchases uh, but the amount that we're, we're down year over year is not quite alarming to me at this point again just want to make that note because we are watching the motor vehicle excise we did reduce our estimate um, based on uh, on our COVID budget that we went for to town meeting. Um, and then really the only other, to me in, in the local receipt area that was a larger a decrease year over year was investment earnings. Now we just know, you know, different uh, economic climate than we were a year ago. Uh, however, we, we're still at 39% of the budget two months in. So compared to the budget, we're in great shape. Just want to make that point when you look at that page, when you see the year over year, we are lower, but uh, again, uh, not a big concern at this point for me. Don, if, if, you don't, if you don't mind, just expand on that. You said timing issue. Is that, are you referencing more that there may be a delay coming from RMV to us, or is it just the seasonality of car purchases that's, you know, we may not have seen the, the comeback on that? Uh, it could be a little bit of both. I, I, to, be, to be honest, I didn't do an in-depth look. Paula may have a little better answer than, than, than that at this point? Go ahead, Paul. Yeah, the, um, the registry of motor vehicles, they're not necessarily on a, like a schedule. They just package up the, the bills when, when they see fit and then they send them out to all the towns and then they bill. So from one year to the next, you know, between you know, the, the first three months of the year, you might have one commitment or two commitments depending on when the RMV sends out the bills and when you send them out. 
All right, so, so then I, you're not going to get the receipts in if you don't if we don't send out the bills for some reason. Okay. All right. I, I actually have some some charts and we can show that and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So so I guess I mean is it possible that there's some sort of large, you know, quantity that we're just a few weeks behind just receiving? Yeah, or the bills just went out and so people haven't started paying them yet. Yeah. But as you get like like Don said, the beginning of the year you put out over a million dollars and and that's that's in February. The ones that come after that, you know, get increasingly smaller typically. The next one, you know, would be a hundred thousand or something like that. This time of the year, they're they're probably all under fifty thousand. So they're not big chunks, but if you just put out, send out a bill, they can kind of throw off your your percentages depending on the timing. So. so so it's not likely that we'll recover or make that gap much smaller because the the bills are getting smaller as the year goes on. If we're starting this far behind. Um. Well, I mean, Don, I, I don't, I'm not looking at this thing and I'm not showing you, let me bring up mine. Yeah, like I said, I, I didn't, I didn't look at the individual commitments to date, but again, that gap could be made up if we build at the very end of August, we won't receive anything until September, maybe later. So that gap, if you're looking at number of commitments or amounts of commitments um, during this fiscal year, that gap could be made up again. And that's why I reference timing. Um, but without, uh, yeah, I think there's a 50,000 one, the $50,000 commitment done that you may not have. Okay. Chris, did you want to say something? Well, I was just going to show the screen that Paul was talking about before, which I think I'm showing, right? Um, which shows right. uh, percentage collected year to date. So, uh, as of, uh, as of uh, why don't you talk about yeah, this? On the top there, it goes through 630. But um, if you look down at the bottom, I did a today, just so you can see where, where it's at. And so we've actually, you see how it's, now the mail build is up to 1.75 million versus the 1.624. Yeah, it's a much smaller gap. So yeah. I think some of those commitments came out afterwards. I don't have the dates on the right, but on the right hand side, you can see the actual commitments this year versus last year in the yellow there. So we actually have more bills out and, and we actually have a, a greater dollar amount and a greater uh, number of bills actually than last year. That's great. Great. Okay. okay. Yeah. So as, to, Don, to Don's also, point, it's not, it's not a concern right now. Not a concern right now. Right. It's just something you have to understand with motor vehicle. It's also important to know that Paul's talking about this. Also. Collect. We we book it on a on a fiscal year basis. She's talking about this on a calendar year basis because that's how they build. Uh, so we get our biggest chunk after the new year. The calendar new year, but it's right in the middle of the fiscal year. Exactly. Don, you can continue. All right. Um, then on the expenditure side, we're we're at a total of 19.2 percent spent. Um, but again, when you talk about timing, uh, we pay a lot of debt service up front. Uh, we're scheduled in July and August, and then it would be six months later. So. Based on the time and when that debt service is paid, it makes the, bud, the overall budget appear to be a bit high. But when you take that into account, our transfers to other funds, which would be our, our, some of our stabilization funds, and then also employee benefits, we have about $2.5, $2.6 million uh, pension assessment that we pay in July so that we could take advantage of um, savings, paying it early. I think we save about forty dollars or $50,000 by paying it in one installment versus two, or one payment versus two installments over the year. So we try to take advantage of that whenever we can, which we've, we've been able to do um, well before I came here. So, um, and another thing that, that I did note was that looking at the public safety um, line item, included in that through August, uh, so July and August, is about $80,000 that's posted there related to COVID related expenses that as we go through the fiscal year by December 30th, I will have those expenditures reclassed to either a CARES grant or a FEMA grant. So right now they're parked in the general fund in a specific line item that, that I built in there. 
uh, to keep track of everything in one place. So that right now is being reported in that line. Um, so again, another another reason we're 19.2. If you look at it over year over year, where we are two months in versus the entire year, we're in we're in really good shape on, on the expenditure side as well. Great, thank you. Okay, any questions from the board? Okay. Uh, Chris, would you mind pulling up the water fund? So water fund, revenues, we're in good shape, 18.8% received. A uh, couple items to note based on year over year comparison, um, user charges, quarter one billing, our commitment was about $200,000 higher. So collections, when you look at the usage charges received, um, 175,000, which is, which is great. Um, that's about, I didn't write the percentage down, but I think it was about a 20 or 30% increase over last year. Um, capital recovery fee is up. And then the sale of water to Linden Pond is, is also up again, based on, on the amount of consumption and usage. Um, two months in, that's great. Again, there's, there's some revenues as we go through the year and doing these reports, there are certain there are certain commitments that are done twice a year versus four times a year, so or, or even once a year. So there's an annual receipt or a payment from the town to the water uh, department for all the town's usage in the capital recovery fee for the, for the, for the hydrant fee. We also pay monthly for usage. Um, so that's not showing up yet. Uh, hydrant distribution charges, that is billed, I think, in the second commitment. So again, 18.8% uh, received through two months is, is really good. Uh, and then looking at the expense side is, is the same thing as kind of talking about the general fund. We have debt service that when you look two months in, we've already spent 50%. That's due to uh, pre-established debt service payments uh, in July and August. And then we posted the indirect transfer, indirect cost transfer and the capital project transfer that was voted at town meeting as well for their capital plan. Uh, so when you actually look at the operating, they're only at 11.5% of their budget spent to date, which again, uh, they've been doing a great job being conservative in their budgeting year over year. And, and this just continues to show uh, how well they've been doing. Terrific. Okay. Uh, Any questions on water? Sewer? No. Finally, sewer. So because sewer, uh, the commitments are based on water usage, there was an increased commitment level as well. Uh, so they are also year over year ahead. In total, about $120,000 ahead. Um, from where we were last year. Two of the bigger items, usage charges up about 16%. Um, and then uh, sewer connection fees is up 200% or $46,000. So those two make a big bulk of what our year over year increases. And so year to date, we're at 21.5% of the budget received. And uh, again, that's great because just like the timing of some of the revenues on the water side, there's also uh, similar items on the sewer side when, it, when we talk about the sewer betterment. So it shows that we've collected $46,000 so far. That would have been most likely uh, from prior year um, commitment. So FY20, FY19 revenues from those commitment years because the sewer commitments in the general fund and in sewer do not uh, get committed until the January 1 commitment. So 21.5% collected to date is, is really good shape. Um, and then same thing on the expenditure side, like we just talked with, with the water, uh, due to timing, you can see we've, we've to date spent 75% of our debt service, again, based on 
predetermined uh, payment schedule, our transfer for indirects and, uh, and their capital stabilization transfer, and um, we're at 12.3% operating. So overall, all three funds are doing great. Uh, and we'll continue to monitor and, and report back to you folks on a monthly basis. Great, thank you. Uh, good work, thanks. Paul? So uh, how much of the um, increased revenue do you think is from just stay at home from the point of view <laughs> of the lockdown? Um, because, you know, a, a year from now, as we, you know, we open back up, you may see a dip in the revenues from just usage. Uh, you know, I think that I, I'm just curious as to year over year what it looked like. We could. I don't know the details of who, what customers, but it could be a big part of people being home. But the offset, too, is, you know, the schools are a big uh, pay uh, for the water department. And right. if kids aren't in school and, and the teachers weren't there all summer. That's right. Uh, That's right. Yeah. So without it, those details, I, I really can't say. But it, it's a good point because I, I tease Lee, Leonora Jenkins all the time. I said, oh, I'm using so much water at home and you're, you're going to be, you know, going to get all these revenues. And she said, yeah, but our biggest customer are the schools is the town and, you know, they're not in session. Chris? Mm -hmm. But I will, uh, to, to follow up on that point, Paul, I, I distribute the, uh, the, the monthly usage numbers and they went up for five straight months. In fact, it was like a peak this summer. I think it was in July. It was like almost an all-time monthly water usage peak in Cohasset. Now that was partly driven by people being at home. The fact that it was a drought, everybody was right. wanting lawns, and and now that there's been water restrictions put into place since then. So, uh, and now schools back in session at least partly. So, um, that said, I think a lot of adult, a lot of you know parents that would normally or adults in general who would normally be commuting to Boston are still not doing that. So they're at home, um, and so there's more of that water use. And again, the drought hasn't gone away, even though there's water use restrictions. So people are still watering within the boundaries, hopefully they're following the rules. Um, it did slow down a little bit. The August number was still up over last year. It wasn't up as much. Uh, I think I think the, one of the numbers earlier in the year was up like 40% or something crazy. So um, I, I would say that if, and again, as Don points out too, the schools were, were closed in June, right? So um, in May and June, and actually, most of March, April, May, and June. <laughs> and, and water use rates soared. Still went up. Um, I do expect to level out a little bit, uh, partly because people should be not using as much water as we get into the season anyway. Um, because, uh, you know, we, we, the, there's no, there really isn't any rain in the forecast, I'm afraid. So we do have to be, it's great that people are using it from a revenue point of view, but from an environmental point of view, we've got to be a little bit more careful about it as we you know, enter the fall and you know, watch uh, the water levels. Great. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Any, any last questions? Don and Paula, thank you both very much. All right. Thank you. For joining us. We'll see you in a few short weeks. <laughs> Ready. Take care. If you, if you want to just hang out behind the scenes, Don, for, for a minute or two. Yeah, just, absolutely. Because we've got to pivot to the select board goals. I just want to talk. Actually, I could, if both of you just want to hang out for just a second. If, we, if, you, if there's no other questions about where we are on the budget. We'll, no. About the fiscal stability goal, and, and let me just let me just uh, where is it? I have, I, have, I have so many screens. Screens. All right, here we go. So as as you see on the agenda, there's the two of our four goals. Um, is financial stability, which is something we'll be checking in on frequently, and um, and then capital infrastructure, which I think Chris is pivoting to us to. Um, and then at our next meeting, we will tackle the other goals, including the health goal, which we need to drill down on some of the very specific projects within that. Um, so we'll take that up in October. So goal three, uh, as you see here, uh, to actively review, evaluate, and assess town finances challenged by the current economic climate. And one of the things that we committed to doing, uh, which we've been doing tonight, is uh, monthly updates with all of you, a uh, little more in depth. Um, and uh, we're also including these quarterly tax and main revenue collections. There is that, um, some of those have always been uh, part of the packet that you get. You know, there's that graph. Um, you know, the uh, here I can show you quickly. I think for, for viewers at home, 
there's this uh, chart we give every we send out everybody, which kind of gives you a year to date, you know, where we are month to month from last year to this year, and also you know where we are as compared to the budget. Obviously, a lot of you know the motor vehicle as we discussed is very light. You can see that licenses and permits are kind of right where they were last year, but a little bit below fees, still a little bit below. Um, and again, you can see, you know, these are all num charts, things that are very easy to, easy to graph. Um, and so we share this with all of you. We're also doing an update with advisory on Thursday, uh, Thursday night, Don and I. And we're going to continue doing these monthly updates for both you and for advisory. We had not historically done these with advisory in the fall, uh, but I, we're going to continue to do that. Uh, another thing we've talked about with Don is actually getting these now up on the website. So after we present them to all of you and talk about them, we're going to post them on the town website so folks can see them. Um, and, um, you know, they have any questions they can, you know, ask. Uh, and one of the things we've also talked about doing is possibly doing a little mini video uh, to post to maybe explain it because I have that executive summary that you all get to. So if Don is willing, maybe uh, he, I, and maybe Paula, depending on what we're talking about, can do a little quickie roundtable. And then people can watch, you know, the, the five minute monthly video summary of finances. So uh, since we have these platforms, we might as well use them, right? It's easy enough to do a little quick uh, little video summary. So we're hoping to start doing that with this month. So once this, we're done with the presentations on Thursday, if there's something else to update, we'll, we'll do the first round and post these up on the finance uh, department's website. So people will see them. And we'll put a link and let people know on the Facebook page. Just, just one, one sort of detail that different people ask about, um, and I don't have answers to, um, is, is just, you know, what, how much money are we getting for COVID um, or CARES Act or any other, you know, specific, unique to this time <laughs> um, money and how, how is that getting spent and circulated? I know Don referenced some of the costs that'll be, you know, re redirected um, um, or whatever the accounting word is in yeah. December, you know, out of public safety, for example, into other funding. It would just be a good, I, I would like to see a snapshot shot of that, not necessarily every month, but just, you know, at some point in this, this you know, in the next couple of months of, what's come in that's outside of our operating budget and, and how is that getting apportioned? That can, that can be done. I was actually, as I was waiting uh, for the agenda items to get to mine, I was working on my COVID summary. Uh, just so you know, I mean, I do every, every week we have a, a vendor warrant where we're paying bills and I keep track of a, a master spreadsheet of everything we spend out of these accounts so that I can A, track it for where we have to spend it or, or reclass it to either CARES or FEMA, mm -hmm. uh, because FEMA, uh, there's certain costs that FEMA will cover 75%. There are certain things they won't cover at all that 100% goes to CARES. So mm -hmm. um, I have all of that summarized by ca specific categories through June, which I can, I can uh, put that into a nicer format and update you and send that to uh, the group and get that up online. I'm working on now, uh, just going through July through now, making sure I have everything uh, recorded properly and coded for my reclassing purposes and reporting for um, state and federal uh, report requirements. So uh, right. I can definitely give you an update through June and the next day or so I can send that out uh, to everybody. Uh, basically what there's various categories uh, for CARES at FEMA. Um, so I've been tracking them based on accelerated telework capacity, which is basically anything related to um, uh, Zoom subscriptions, more laptops that people needed to work from home, um, really anything related to the network, anything that we needed to, to run these Facebook uh, live uh, chats, go in there. PPE is another reporting category. Uh, cleaning and disinfection of public buildings, signage and communication, Grocery and mail delivery, which uh, is a small one, but again, it's a, a specific category that both FEMA and CARES has. And then really the other bucket is anything uh, that isn't specific in these categories, but is COVID related and we had to spend the money because we normally wouldn't have. A couple okay. examples there would be uh, payments to Sandy Beach. We had them monitor the public um, Parking lot, parking lot, tracked it in and out, how many people were there. So that was an expense, about $1,800 a month through the entire summer. Um, other costs outside of some of these categories would be our 
annual town meeting. We had it outside. That That is in the other category. So I can provide you through June 30th kind of where we're at based on these categories. And then if you want further detail, I can summarize, summarize it by vendor uh, and just basically share with you guys what I have so far. Um, that, that's great. I think a snapshot, you know, through June 30th, just so we understand kind of what what's counting and, and and not and then you know as we get deeper into <laughs> towards december maybe we can have a, a larger discussion about that i think sure. it'll be very helpful thank you yep okay Chris. so we'll do we'll do that uh, i guess we'll do, we can do a donald or june that we could do a through the first quarter you know the uh, july to september sometime later october as don gets a lot pulled together yeah that, that would be perfect actually and I'd say based on all the things that are going on in Washington, I don't think any of us can expect any action anytime soon on any kind of additional money. So what we've got is what we've got. And when it, uh, when it, by the, at, at this point, that's all we're going to plan to have. So uh, the, um, uh, so one of the other things um, we, uh, we've been talking about is doing some kind of a, uh, some kind of educational videos, whether it, you know, it's us talking just so again, some of the stuff is, is hard. If you're not, if you don't live this or do it every day, uh, you don't even understand how the process works. So I think we're going to try to do some videos this fall, just have on the website, just educational. How does the budget work? How does the process work? You know, who approves what, that kind of stuff. Uh, and there's also, so we've been talking about doing board and committee training. One of the, one of the, the, the side benefits, and it's, they're, they're not many of them, but one of them is that the state's pushed a lot of stuff online that wasn't online before. So they have a lot of training materials, which we think we can share. And we may actually post up on the website or at least put links on. So people can then go and, and, and the, the, there's a lot of training the state would do in person. And they've done a lot of that now and pushed online. So there's, there's a whole, which I, I bookmarked and I won't share with you now, there's a ton of material. So we might actually, you know, try to do some in-service training and, and, you know, if any boarding committee, we can, we can play them and have people log on to a Zoom site and we can play them that way. That way we know who came. <laughs> uh, we can also push out links to people. Obviously, if you want to do it and ensure that people are here, we should do it on a Zoom platform or something. So there's a lot of there's a lot of resources that I think we want to put out for people and uh, let people become more municipally fiscal literate, particularly those who have to deal with this on a regular basis. And uh, yep. with a couple of new members coming on finance uh, on advisory coming soon, I think we would be doing some onboarding with them anyway. So it's a, it's yep. a probably a great opportunity. Just just in terms of training videos, Chris, I, um, putting on one of my other hats, which is the Maya uh, the Maya um, program. You know, I know that they have had discussions about, you know, training for public officials um, and or, you know, just healthy choice kind of things. And so to the extent that they're appropriate for some of the boards and committee members and they're not necessarily employee specific related, um, you know, it might be something just to look there um, for possible resources for you know, for for anybody serving the town, we've been using a lot of those for employees, and Paula can talk to that, <laughs> or if you want, because she's the one of the she's the one of the co chairs of the wellness committee. Yeah. Uh, in fact, she just pushed out the fall, the fall, uh, you know, uh, Zoom. I think it's like what you say, planting Paula. You know, like planting and plant. You know, it's the outdoor activity. It's a gardening series that that uh, for their Zoom sessions. 30 minute sessions with uh, somebody with 25 years experience in gardening, how to garden at home, bringing plants in from yeah, the, yeah. Uh, in for the winter, yeah. stuff like that. So it's kind of cool. It's a little different yeah. than some of the other stuff we've done. Yeah. Right. But we've done a lot. So we've been pushing a lot of videos out to staff. There's a lot of training videos that Maya's done, which has been great. Uh, I have been very delinquent. I've, I actually started a whole, <laughs> a whole like life balance thing. And it was supposed to be like, like some, some, some yoga, some like, you know, Mindfulness. Mindfulness. Thank you. That's the word. Well, I, I didn't. I didn't stick with it very well. So I keep. I get this. I get the updates on my text. I get text updates. Right. As far as I'm getting. So and they they really are great. So um, uh, and again, I, we're happy to share what we can uh, with anyone. You know, uh, any of you or anyone. Yeah. Just flag them. I think if they if they make sense in terms of serving um, the town. And, and, you know, we've posted for the community at large. There's been some links to you know other you know kind of uh, uh, mindfulness and wellness and things that we found for, that, that people can access publicly. We have those. That's great. Uh, yeah, I was gonna do that mindfulness too, but I forgot about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with Jack. I, You're right. I, just, just I eat keep your, forgetting about it. Uh, I couldn't resist. I eat just your couldn't. spinach or that makes you strong or something. Carrie, did you have a comment or? 
I think the video idea is great. And I think offering some more video type programming as the weather gets colder and people are back inside more is really important. So let's continue on this track. You know, one of the things we tried, we talked about back in the uh, last fall uh, and uh, you know, we had a member of the advisory who's otherwise preoccupied right now with other things. I uh, started, you know, we did a couple of Facebook live things and uh, at least we tried to. And now that we actually are, I wouldn't say terribly skilled. I have trouble getting us on Facebook Live tonight, by the way. I'm not sure what part of the Facebook page we're on. We're on some part of it, but not, when, not what we normally are, because it wouldn't link right. So I think we will. I, Carrie, I'd like to do something where we may have like a round table and then answer Facebook Live questions about the budget. You know, we could do that. Yeah. Well. So, so I'm happy to schedule that. So if any of you want to take part, uh, let me know, and we can set something up and do a live Zoom Facebook thing. I know Don would love to, you know, spend an hour chatting about finance. And we I also have we also have that great cable access uh, channel. So <laughs> I'll be gonna have a live round table. I, I probably get the highest ratings ever on one four three TV. We get our round <laughs> municipal right. finance. Well, uh, and and before you know it, we're gonna be entering into FY twenty two budget with with a whole lot of unknowns. So um, so that's uh, uh, if, that's important. kind of a look at, at some of the things we're doing and. Um, uh, you know, so it, it's fairly, you know, we're doing a lot. We, we always did a lot of updates, we're doing more of them and spread them more widely. And again, if there's anything that the board wants to do more, I'll just, just ask and, and uh, you know, we'll plug in. So, I think Jack has another question, it looks like. Yep, Jack. Yeah, by the way, Chris, I wanted to thank you. That was very nice that you got the Safe Harbor survey up there. That's wonderful. I mean, this is something that the whole community and I know the select board and, and you personally are strong supporters. What, you know, can I ask you, could we get together sometime later this week or probably next week with you and maybe Nicole and see if there's one or two concrete things that would help to move this forward? Could we maybe get together in a meeting? Probably, I think at this point, it'd be better off beginning of next week. Is that, could that, would that work in your schedule? Chris? I'll, I'll have, uh, I'll, yeah, I'm happy to have Tracy work to set something up, Jack. Um, okay, know, good. Uh, we'd like to be able to get that video. We'd like to be able to get the survey out as long as possible, as far as possible. I do know that uh, Nicole has been working, and again, this is a little bit of a digression. I'm sorry, Diane. Yeah. It, That's okay. The, no. the, the, um, Nicole has been working with the schools because now they're just starting, right? And she really, mm -hmm. the middle school kids, that was one of the things we, we were going to be engaging in the spring. Sure. But it stopped. So she's been working very closely. And you know, they have to kind of get their sea legs under them getting this new year started yeah. today. So the hope is that as we get into this, and probably more likely in October, after they've had a few weeks, mm -hmm. student ambassadors and others will start to engage and try to get some of those middle school kids, which is really a, a key a target area to get them engaged get their input and, and uh, so we're definitely looking forward to that and this is no, this, excellent. Excellent. Yeah, this, that, this is part way, of it oh, i'm going i'm sorry no i mean that way why we have us uh, not this week but beginning of next week and just just to see if there's some concrete things and and thanks chris that would be a big help i appreciate it yeah and and just this is this is part of that and that overall healthy um portion and I, I i have been in touch with nicole and um you know i know that we would be looking for them to make a presentation coming and they have that ground level cafe that we approved for october 2nd yep. um i think that's going to be one of the first times where they're really they're getting first of all they have so many youth ambassadors it's like almost everybody every kid in town is a youth ambassador and which is so fantastic so i i, I see great things going especially as the school starts to um get into a rhythm and a cadence for the for yep. the year um definitely on our list best thing we could do as a town so chris Yes. You Anything else on finance? Anyone has so that so those are a lot of things we're looking to do, and we're going to continue to update, obviously quarter, uh, monthly, quarterly, and again we'll we'll circle back on getting some of these, um, you know, uh, live Facebook and other video type things uh, together. We'll talk more in the next month or two. So, so let's move into um, uh, uh, capital infrastructure, and I know that one of the members of the town hall building committee has been. Um, hanging yes. out with us um right, thanks, so, so, screen for a while thank you don and paula you're welcome to hang out uh, if you want and i know thanks we, don and paula we have mark we're going to invite up and uh if phil wants to join up just he could just like wave his hand or something why don't i just promote him anyway where's phil is he's in the waiting room if he wants to join us um but thanks me, for sitting with us mark so here is welcome this, aboard phil <laughs> uh the capital second goal uh capital infrastructure committee 
financing discussion, identified capital infrastructure projects, including the Elm Street Corridor, intermunicipal water and sewer, and the town hall renovation. Um, obviously, intermunicipal water and sewer, you've all been deeply engaged in the last two weeks, last night and the week before, and uh, now the sewer uh, commission and, and Brian Joyce and others are going to be dig deep, deep diving into some of the data and pulling things together, um, and that, that work's starting. And um, so that, that's something that's already in progress. Um, and uh, we have Phil Lair and Mark Cameron, uh, Phil the chair. And are you the vice chair now, Mark? I'm not even sure. I know I see you all the time. So, okay. He, he's just the volunteer who likes to appear on Zoom. So, uh, so <laughs> if I can have them uh, both uh, give us a quick update on where Town Hall is. And you're both muted. There we go. There Mark's, go. Trying to do, right. Mark's trying to do a little presentation of where we're at now. So Thank just you. Just hanging out, supporting. Do you, you, need to show anything on, do you need to show anything on the screen, Mark? Do you need, do I need to give you the power to put anything on the screen? Are you good? No, I'm good. Can you hear me okay? Great. Thank okay. you. Um, so just a good uh, updated. We've got a good overall team now. We've got the uh, an architect and, and an owner's project manager that's um, that's helping us, and um, we're just getting to the stages where we can start involving um, other uh, design team uh, members, the mechanical, electrical, fire protection consultants. Um, for most of the summer here, we've been working to identify the programming requirements, the square footage, and the departmental needs of what everyone's looking for. Um, so we've we we we're able to take that information, model it into several different layouts, um, both utilizing the existing foundation and rebuilding the structure on the existing foundation of the annex side. And um, we, we've, we've proved that out to not be something that was worthwhile. And um, the committee made a vote, the full committee made a vote to proceed with one basic layout. Uh, and uh, subcommittee then subsequently met to further that de de enhance design and make some tweaks and move things around. Uh, we presented that modified layout to the entire committee this evening, just before this meeting. And there was a unanimous vote to move that design into the next stage of development. So as of tonight, we're moving that the, ar the architect is going to then take the uh, other design consultants um, mechanical, electrical, fire protection, and bring them into the equation to design, and then subsequently we'll be able to put a price to or start some the uh, cost analysis of where that comes in. So, uh, just in terms of some of the key features of what we're designing, we've got something that's a universal access, so everybody coming in the same door, uh, which would be on the side at what we call the side lot there. So coming in a side entrance there, um, handicap, everything would be the same access point. Um, the Mark, auditorium this, would be. Can we throw this on the screen? I mean, I've seen, I've seen the um, previous ones, but I'd love to show everybody kind of what you're talking about. It's kind of hard to imagine without it in front of me. Sure. I guess, uh, Chris, if, uh, Chris, you're muted. Yeah, I don't, I don't, ha I don't have it. So let me give you. Um, hold on. Okay. And, and and this, you, you know, uh, it would be it would be great to see something, but um, this is really a check in, and and we probably should, um, you know, be intentional about scheduling a time or having the the town hall building committee have a meeting where where it makes sense to invite the public to listen to you. You know, if you're sitting around with mechanical engineers, that might not be the right time. <laughs> but, you know, if you're really starting to, you know, you want to start socializing the design, then, um, you know, just keep us posted and we'll try to yeah. support you with that. Yeah, I don't think we wanted to get into too many specifics tonight. We just right. wanted to yes. let you know that we were moving forward. I think uh, one of the challenges, I was just looking at my schedule, I went through 11 meetings on the town hall boarding meetings since April. Uh, one of the biggest challenges was, uh, you know, the space, uh, space assessment trying to figure out 
uh, how all your different uh, boards and meeting rooms work together, um, who needs to be in the building, who doesn't need to be in the building. And then on top of all that, we've got the COVID requirements. So you just can't pack six people in a 10 by 10 room and put them in cubicles anymore. You really have to design around that. Um, and we wanted to be cognizant of uh, public's access to those particular counters that they need to get in, whether they need to pay a bill or get a permit or, or, or whatever. So, you know, that, that changes the design from the first floor to the second floor and hides some people and brings more people to the front. But mm -hmm. uh, I think, you know, as Mark said, I'm, I'm not stepping on him, but we are finally got to a point where we have a, a general layout that we all like and works. So that, that's taken a while to get to that point. So we're, we're able to move forward now. Um, you know, and it's still gonna be, it's still gonna be two or three months before we even get some kind of a number on that. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we've, we've, we've still got a lot of work to go, but we're moving. Mark, do you want the floor back? Or do you want us no, to I'm ask questions? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no, I mean, the only, I mean, we, as far as the, the, the key design there, like I said, the universal access, the uh, we're programming the auditorium space to be uh, used for the, the select board um, for this, for, you know, assuming we can be back in person and live at some point. And then, um, you know, just the general style of the building is something that would fit in character of what belongs on the common, something that respects the size of the original town hall um, it, it is it is the subservient to the to the to the original building, and um, but it will have its own identity. It's not just a, a copy. So uh, it, it's it seems to we've we've gone through uh, a few versions of things we didn't like, and uh, we as a committee we were able to unanimously move this along tonight, which was which was a big step. Great. And possible, and um, you know, given the COVID situation, it's probably a good I, good thing we didn't go in that route. But has your general kind of design thought changed from March of 2020 to now in terms of what what kind of a building we we need given some new realities with respect to the pandemic um, and what's ahead? It, you know, it it pushed us not to to pack things in there so tightly, although we're def definitely respecting not having too much space. Uh, from, a, a, from a structural standpoint, the old town hall, the second floor of the old town hall is very restricting. You can't take the, old town, the, the second floor of old town hall and open that up to be one big giant area. So structural uh, limitations up there dictated that a lot of those things be separate offices rather than one open space. Um, so regardless of what we wanted up there, there, from that standpoint, it led us to have walls, uh, not open cubicles, which in the end, everything, you know, good, good in this situation, because it, it gives us uh, more hard bound barriers between occupants. Mm -hmm. Great. Any other questions from board members? Carrie, getting ready? Good? Um, yeah. So this sounds really well thought out. Thank you for this update. We all know the urgency on this and how much we need this as a town. Thinking about how this didn't play out well last time and the plans did not get approved, what do we see being the major differences, Mark and Phil, with these new plans that are different from the last plans that the town didn't seem to be thrilled with? Can, can I just amend that question just a yeah. tad because the plans were approved it was the funding mechanism that was not approved well right but they're kind of one and the same right if the plans are not like the voters voted it down <laughs> they voted the funding which we want to avoid and we want to avoid right, of course time. yes so right. it's, it's which, just, is, which is the question right exactly and i want to make sure we're taking the steps and being as transparent as possible to make sure this goes through completely this time because we do need this and i appreciate all the work you're putting in so maybe i didn't word the question correctly but i'm i guess i'm trying to say how do we avoid what happened last time happening this time so so I think I think a big part of that comes along with educating folks. I think you, you know it's people were 
maybe voting maybe voting one way or another not knowing what they were really voting for were they voting for the project were they voting for the funding were they voting the plans what were they voting for and um i think you know part of part of what we've talked about as a committee is the communication that we provide to the community and right now we don't have we need to we're not far enough down the road to present everything to the committee but in in parts and, and segments and bits will start involving the committee involving the town with information um and in, in, in some way maybe even involving the town in, in some of the decisions that, that go along with it you know we, we've we've talked about options um so there's you know naturally the money is going to be a challenge i mean there's no that's that's always going to be the uh the, the situation so we're designing it right now and we're going to uh, see where the money's um, going to lay out and, and, that, and how that plays into it and then proceed accordingly from there. I think also we're very fortunate to have uh, people that were on the committee before. So they yeah, went through the process. They went through, you know, all of the work to get the presentation, to get the, uh, you know the people to support them, and then have the heartbreak of having the uh, funding drop down. Um, so we have people that have been through it, have learned from it, and they're going to share with us how we're going to move this forward in, in a way that the townspeople will accept it. And as Mark said, so much of it is education and presentation, so the people really understand why we need to do this. And I, and in terms, I, I see there's a question. There's a there is a question in the uh, in the Q and A yeah. section, and and it even came up in the in the committee is what's it going to cost and and the, and the reality is at this point we don't know we don't have we, we have to design the building first before we can uh give an i give give everyone a real good idea of what the building is going to cost now we could tell you what a building of certain size of a square footage would cost but it's very it's very different you know it's like buying a a low-end car or an economy car or a high-end car they both go down the road but this is going to it, it, what level are we designing to and we really need to get through the design with the um with the whole team with with everybody to understand okay here's our starting point this is what we can get for this much money and then if that's too much money then we've got to work on value engineering things out right right Corey. yeah i mean you know the one thing that a few people have said is we need this and i think it's still you know, I think developing that idea is, is kind of primary here. Why does this need to occur? And, you know, we have a cost of a project, but the cost of the project really isn't the important thing. It's the delta between what if we do nothing? You know, we have the two options of doing nothing or building something. So, you know, I know there's some numbers, but as you guys work through your educational process, um, I'd encourage you to spend, you know, time trying to get the word out about, you know, if we do nothing, you know, what that would mean for the town are there things that we can't avoid and that's going to help us talk about you know what's the real number we're spending here mm -hmm. and, and i think that you're right i think it's educating the, the people of the town as to what's going on there and and, and we've talked about that as, as a committee yeah and and we as as a board as well jack yeah um having been to a lot of your uh, earlier meetings i was impressed by the the sense that you the town hall building committee you know that the cost is basically what killed the other project. And um, I think the town is well served to understand how hard you guys have worked and how conscious you are. Clearly, we have to do it. Clearly, the town has made a decision. But that doesn't mean that you can't do it in a cost effective manner. And for what I have seen so far, you're paying attention to that is bearing fruit. So uh, I think you're doing a good job and, and thank you and all the other members of your committee. And, and, and just to speak to a little bit of the cost is we did spend uh, quite a, a lot of time um, evaluating the existing foundation of the annex and trying to find a way if that would work. And it became, it became um, the decision was to, it had to go. It was becoming uh, in, uh, an, a larger cost to save the foundation. Yep. And it was save, it was going to be a larger cost to save the foundation, and we were going to get a building that didn't fit our needs that went on top of it. And we were going to find ourselves in a similar situation where we had a building that was under designed or not what we needed, and it was the mm -hmm. 
trying to take the, the cheaper road. And, and so that was one decision that we spent a lot of time on. Um, and the decision was that the foundation has to go. Mm -hmm. But you were prudent in deciding what would go in there, which was, which Correct. is, because uh, I was in those discussions listening uh, and I was very impressed. I think you people are doing it the right way. You're approaching in the proper, proper manner and very prudent with the town's dollar. Thank you. Thanks. 11 meetings, huh, Phil, since <laughs> March. I really appreciate all your work. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, from I, but we, all, we all hope that that, you know, is all worth it in the end, that we're, uh, you know, put our hard hats on in a couple of years here and actually get some dirt dug and, and, and put ourselves yep. in the building that uh, the employees deserve. Yep, absolutely. Great. Thank you. Any, any, anything else? You good? Okay. Mark and Phil, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Chris? Uh, there's one last piece of the, uh, the, the three big uh, goals, and that was the uh, Elm Street Corridor study. And again, we're be talking about the community health piece, which is a really, really big piece next meeting. We couldn't do it all tonight. So there's a lot in that one. So we'll come and unpack that one more next week. Uh, mm -hmm. But the, so, and again, so the Elm Street Corridor Working Group, which this board appointed um, at a prior meeting, met for the very first time today, and Diane is your representative, so do you have an update? Yeah, we, we met today for the first time, and um, like all the other um, master plan implementation working groups, um, it, you know, a lot of it was just trying to get on the same page about what our next steps are. I, I will tell you that we discussed a couple of things. There's a lot of ideas, sort of design ideas around um, the Elm Street Corridor. So basically bringing the village and connecting it in a more intentional way with the harbor. Um, you know, we talked a lot about traffic calming along Elm Street because it's apparently, you know, twice as wide as it actually needs to be and that that just be, makes it a thoroughfare. Um, streetscaping, the captain's walk, which in a lot of other communities is known as the harbor walk. And, and so there are all of these ideas um, are going to result in a sort of design plan. And what, so there's this sort of design trajectory, what, what could this look like? And then the other kind of sector that we're focusing on is the data. You know, somebody said, well, there's no, there's no parking at the harbor. So we need to do something about parking. Well, we need to actually get that data. Data, you know, it's it's one thing to say we need this, or that this street more people speed on it than ever before. Well, let's get those facts and the data put together, and that will help. Um, it, you know, just like with the town hall, you know, you got to you got to get the facts and figures. What do you really need? What what issues are you trying to address? Uh, what are problems? What are safety problems? What are aesthetic issues? So. So we're kind of working in two um, kind of sub subgroups amongst ourselves, which is is focusing on again getting the data together and then kind of marrying it with some of the visionary design work that is coming up. And we we this group is like we got to get to a deadline, so um, we're going to meet again in two weeks and and at least have. Um, some of the data together so that we can actually start talking about well what could this look like in the future and you know we're um it was great it was a, a really good meeting uh, lauren did a terrific job facilitating and um we'll see where it goes and the and uh chief sylvia is on the committee as well because obviously the public safety building is currently there um, um and jason um from engineering talked a lot about the water main that needs to be replaced and some of the sewer work. So there's, you know, the sewer plants there too, and they're not going away, even with a future um, secondary uh, public safety building, the, that Elm Street building is still gonna be there. So bringing those stakeholders in first in terms of um, town needs and infrastructure, and then we'll start, you know, it'll take whatever road it was meant to take. <laughs> But it's exciting because it's it's really marrying cultural assets, you know, economic development assets, infrastructure, water sewer assets, and all of the other, um, you know, working groups. It, we're all going to dovetail at some point, and I think I'm really excited about the progress um, everybody's been making. So that's about it. Well, that's uh, that's. 
goals three, two, two and three. Uh, a yeah. lot of active pieces moving right now, um, and um, we'll continue to talk regularly. I think um, uh, on the sixth, uh, with with the health, I know there'll be kind of a fatality. There's updates on that. There's updates on affordable housing. There's a number of other key things uh, to to be touching base on, including yep. health, health, you know, public health, and all of that. So, right. uh, that's where we are. Um, if you want to pivot to my update, I, yep, you want to let's pivot to your update really comments. quickly. And, and again, my thunder's been stolen on both of them. One, I was just kind of rewind everybody the town halls open. Uh, if you want to come, physically come down, I will not share, but there is if you go on the website, you'll see a little link. If you want to come to town hall, you click, and it's actually an online reservation form. So you can click, pick times, say you want to go, and it'll get a meal to the, the person you want to meet with. If you just want to show up and pay a bill, that's okay too, a little bit. Uh, but it would be best, if at all possible, to make an appointment um, to make sure this time, because we're trying to limit the number of people in the building at any given time. So um, if you can make an appointment, that would be great. If you can't, because you just kind of pay a bill, it just picks something up, you just kind of have to check in and make sure that we can do, uh, you know, we can serve you. And we're only, you know, we're, op we're open two nights again. Um, so we're only, there's no walk-ups on Tuesday night. So if you really want to come in on a Tuesday night for something, you need to make an appointment. That's 4.30 to 7.00. So um, please call ahead or use the form and you know, you're welcome to come in whether you want to meet with me or the clerk or somebody to consult on something. We are open again on Tuesday nights. Uh, and the other is uh, what Peter mentioned earlier, the Open Space and Recreation Plan is officially one state approval. So it's very exciting. That's the latest in a string of, of great work the community has done collaboratively. So um, it's very exciting. It's a very exciting step. And we have an active plan for the next six years. Uh, I know that Peter and his team are very excited to affect one of their first projects, which is uh, new trail signs, all right, park, are going to be going up, I think, this weekend. So um, that's one of the first concrete things. So I know they're very excited. We're making sure that they have tree appropriate <laughs> mounts so uh, we don't get in trouble. Uh, so uh, I, I think they're working on that. But I think the signs have come in, which is exciting. And I know that they're going to try to work on putting some up this weekend. So, Chris, uh, just on. Um I have a, a bunch of things, but they, uh, some of them do relate to like the good news with the open space and rec plan and the grants um, awards that we discussed last week. Um, you know, can we, can we sort of be proactive about getting press releases out or, 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 you know, I know we've retained a public relations firm and I don't know if they're just sort of a, a crisis man management firm, but you know, it, it's 